Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm the art teacher from Art Projects for Kids. I'm very happy to share that over the years, my website has helped millions of kids learn how to draw. Today's drawing video is about how to draw a hummingbird. Their little bodies have a lot of shapes and colors going on, but I think they're easier to draw than you may think. Let me show you how. Now, before you begin, it's really helpful to take a minute to create some guides on your paper. You just need to fold and crease your paper in half in both directions. You'll have crease lines that match my tutorial, which really do help you see where to draw. Step number one, the hummingbird body starts with a kind of slanted oval like this. It sits in the middle of the paper. Start at the top and draw the left side, then go back up and draw a matching right side. Step number two, the long beak is added next. Draw a curve where it attaches to the head and then draw a long skinny beak to the left. Erase the inside line when you're done. Step number three. Next comes a long wing that fills up this much of the paper. Start with a point on the right, draw a large curve that overlaps the body, and then goes back to the point. Afterwards, erase the inside line. The other wing is added, and it's a little shorter because it's further away. Step number four, start the tail with one long feather at the bottom of the body that goes almost to the bottom of the paper. Then add another feather right next to it. Step number five, draw a circle for the eye about the size of a pea or so. Add a circle inside for the shiny spot. Next comes a simple curved line on the cheek. It's going to be used to separate some of the bright colors on the hummingbird's head. The wings need two curved lines added like this. They are also made of two colors. Step number six. Those wings need a little more definition, so add lines like this for the small feathers. They should all kind of line up with each other. Now do the same for that other wing. One more line is added to help separate the colors. Start at the tail and draw a line that goes up and then connects to the wing. Step number seven, add a line across the throat area to help make the shape for the red neck. Oh, and you do need to add two little teardrop shapes for those feet. Step number eight, now for the flower. Start with a curve shape in the corner and then add one to the right and one on the left. Add another petal on the right side, one that is a little bit bigger, and then also one on the left. You can finish the flower with a large petal shape that takes up the rest of that space, kind of like this. Okay, all that's left here are those lines and circles in the middle of the flower. I'm gonna add about three of them. And finally, just a few more lines inside these flower petals to make them look like they have a little more texture. Step number nine. All right, the drawing is done, so it's time to trace all those pencil lines with a black marker. It really does help let everyone see your drawing and makes it a little easier to color too. When the tracing is done, it's always a good idea to take just a minute to erase any extra pencil lines that might still be showing. Okay, I'm gonna use that marker to fill in the eye, being careful to leave that little white spot. And now it's time for the fun coloring. Most hummingbirds' throats are bright red but some can be kind of pink or even purple if you'd rather try those colors. I'm gonna color the tops of my wings a kind of emerald green. The same goes for the head and part of the body. The beak can be a dark gray or a black if you don't have one. And whatever you use can go in for those small feet too. Okay, now for filling in that large flower. Some kind of bright color would be best. I think that's what attracts the hummingbirds in the first place. You know, you could even layer colors like a red and a pink to give it some extra punch. Next, that background needs to be filled in. I'm gonna use blue everywhere, but I suppose you could also make it green so it looks like bushes or something. It's all up to you. And finally, if you do have one of those light gray crayons, then adding some of it to the white bird body will give it a little extra dimension. Most of these gray crayons are really light, so you do have to press extra hard, 
but they can add a really nice soft shadow. And there is a finished hummingbird drawing. They really do have the most adorable little bodies and I love all their colors too. It's no wonder they are so popular. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please check out my website, Arch Projects for Kids, for more fun bird tutorials like how to draw an owl and how to draw a parrot. Thanks for coming and I hope to see you back here again soon.